Blessings everyone and welcome to your weekly forecast, Offset Egyptian style. We're going to be checking into the Oracle cards as well as the Tarot as we're drawing near to this new moon in Leo energy. So if you know anything about astrology and what's going on at this time outside of the Venus and Mercury retrograde and all of that, we uh, have this new moon energy that is really asking us to stand up and take charge of our lives. All right. And that's really been coming out in a lot of the readings that I've been putting out lately. I don't know what you're seeing with other readers out there, but uh, yeah, really just take charge energy and get control back in our lives. All right. Take back our power kind of energy. So watch your ears, take a nice slow, deep breath and let it out when you're ready. Thank you, angels, ancestors, way showers and guides for honoring us with the circle of your wisdom and protection over us. Calling back our power and returning evil eye to sender. Did you guys notice at first when I was doing that that it didn't really want to produce a sound? It was very interesting. So there could be some kind of muting aspect of energy going on at this time. Maybe you're not feeling like you're being heard or something of that nature. You are a star though. However, the Syrian star as well as the blue lotus is coming out here today. And the blue lotus talks about, you know, really getting into that place of peacefulness, zen, bliss, you know, really being able to regulate our emotions, right? Our energy, because with Sekhmet, you know, she uh, was defending her father at one point and went on a killing spree, if you will, to defend him, all right, Ra. And so at one point she realized that that wasn't the way, actually healing and, you know, getting back into a good place within herself and approaching this way of balancing things out from a more constructive as opposed to destructive 222 on the timer perspective was really, you know, a more masterful, more God, goddess way of handling things. All right. Two, three, four. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but it's kind of like, you know, you have to allow spirit to sort some things out, if you will. Is more the energy that I'm getting here today. Whoa. So Shedda, creating and writing, nepotism, renewal, and rebirth. And then we have men on the bottom. There's definitely some strong energy going on here with the Sashetta creative and writing. This is all about, you know, writing a new story for our lives, changing the Akashic records, the way that things, you know, the trajectory that things could be going at this time. Understanding that we have the power to change and get back on track, if you will, on that path of destiny of our lives. Um, Nefertum renewal and rebirth is really coming into this place with the master number of 22. Interesting that 2222, you know, just uh, came up for me to see. So I really feel like, once again, that a big decision is on the board for each of us in our own way, whatever that may be, to make peace with. And he also speaks of the Blue Lotus, which we'll see when I read the card here and get the main energies coming out for us today, okay? And then this last card of men, fertility and creation. So it's like you're fueling all of this growth and this change in your life, you know, in positive ways, whenever you get into this calm place, when you remember who you are and uh, you tap into that sacred Giza, which talks about the blueprints underground, it's like within you, that's just waiting to be released. Wow. With that Sphinx energy released, you know, this is you really getting in touch with the aspect of creation, what is involved with it all from not only a physical perspective, but how that relates to the non-physical or metaphysical aspect of things, right? Because it all relates conceptually, 444, but 
you know, um, it has its own meaning. I always think of it like an algebra problem, right? So different variables with the same equation, if you will. So you're going to get a different answer depending on the variables that you put in place with it, right? All right, so the Nefertum energy coming out here today says, Nefertum is the spirit of the sacred blue, blue lotus flower, the son of Sekhmet and Ta. He is the powerful and quite magical healing god. So Sekhmet is who we were seeing on the bottom uh, as I was shuffling, all right? So remember, she came into that peaceful, balanced state within herself as well and learned that, you know, um, true constructive healing and love is where the power is to be able to really change things in our lives. This Neturu emanates the creative pulse and divine fragrance of inspiration that in, impels life to ascend to higher realms. So it's like rising out of our dark aspects of our life, if you will, like the Phoenix or like that Lotus. Nefertum can assist you to balance yourself energetically to equalize your earth, fire, water, and air elements. So that's that magician energy, if you will, balanced out completely as within, so without, as above, so below. The perfect cross energy there. So with a light and always positive energy, Nefertum is an easy God to work with. Channeled message from Nefertum says, I was born from a blue lotus and I am a spirit now. You too are undergoing a rebirthing time, so recharge yourself and with fragrant baths and meditation with pure essential oils. And I do have some blue lotus, so I'm probably going to go ahead and take a bath with some of that today. It's hard to find. It is expensive, but very magical and smells really beautiful as well. All right, guys. So... Again, make sure that you're using that in your baths and with your meditation. As you learn to live life as a lotus flower, always seeking to grow upwards to the light, open your petals wide and know joy is already within you and awaiting rebirth. So this is just really, again, coming back into this understanding of who you are, you know, writing that story that you know again rewriting getting back on track if you will and again talk, talking about the fertility here uh in the men card it talks all about the fertility and creation right so this is what we are creating and building writing a new story rewriting our story getting back on track with our divine plan is really what this is all about so this is what we're being charged and called to do today. The meaning of this card for abundance says, this is the time of new beginnings, so have patience and know abundance will follow your hard work for love. Time to focus on developing a new relationship rather than continuing con committing to one. For work and career, a it is a good time to start your own business or a new job, especially if involving essential oils and flowers. So I, I've got a flower shop for some reason. That's cool. Allow time for extra study to nurture your plans. For travel, travel to Egypt, France, or Thailand, or any place you will find blue lotuses. Lavender fields are also recommended. So if you don't have blue lotus, you can also use lavender, which of course is pretty uh, abundant, especially the essential oil, right? For health, use essential oils, especially blue lotus oil on your body to bring harmony to your spirit or have an aromatherapy massage. Oh, that sounds amazing right now. For family, new babies in your family, renewal of family relationships that bring joy. And for the future, looking good. Lots of miracles are already starting to manifest in your life. So definitely, it really seems like what I've been seeing with all of this, even you know now, um, is understanding. It's like sometimes we have to deconstruct and reconstruct, you know? Life is constantly doing this cycle of death and rebirth kind of energy. And, you know, when we can understand that certain things are happening basically because something, you know, based has it's past its expiration date or it has reached its expiration date, 
you know. This may be a time that, you know, you're not in a relationship, that you're more in a single mode or, you know, you are kind of learning more about yourself and learning how you can create, you know, if you're a woman especially, how you can step more into this masculine type of energy because one of the things that, you know, I always thought about, even when I was married before, um, is that I still want to be able to be self-sufficient because, you know, you never know, like, your husband could die, you could end up divorcing, whatever the case may be, you still want to be able to take care of yourself, have your own autonomy, you don't want to be in this worried state, right? This is the state we'd rather be in, not this state. If something ends up happening and someone ends up leaving us, we want to know that we can start over and we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to get caught up in being worried about that cycle of starting over 1044, 144. It's like once we've tapped into that air, fire, water, earth energy and we realize that we have the power to recreate our lives, we won't have any problem leaving these situations behind and moving more in the direction that we're meant to go, which is what all that is about with that Six of Swords energy, right? So shut up. Ooh, Queen of Wands coming out. Creative writing. Definitely somebody is getting all jazzed up. This is always gives me that... Um, you know, Phoenix rising energy. It's like she's got that fire spirit in her hand. So this is definitely, at least from the elemental perspective, you got fire coming out right now, <laughs> lighting a fire under your ass perhaps, you know, getting to it, getting the work done, making your list, writing out your goals, whatever the case may be. That's what this creative, creating and writing is. It's like 1144, I just saw now on the timer, but changing your future around, right? This is about not sabotaging our happiness any longer or allowing other people to, is what this is truly about. Being able to stay in that energy of happiness, knowing that, you know, uh, our happiness is within ourselves and when we put ourselves in a position to where we're always honoring our feelings and being true to ourselves, we're not going to ever find ourselves in these trapped type of situations, right? Number 10, renewal and rebirth. Ooh, Ace of Wands energy. So you definitely perhaps are not moving forward with somebody that you know is only about the wand or the sex or, you know, like... Also, what I see with this is don't get too much up in your head, you know, about being able to reach this state. You know what I mean? It's like, give it time, divine timing. You are getting to that state if you haven't already. But I do feel like Spirit is asking you to just be patient with the process. Try to relax. Ooh, definitely this could be a love situation, though. I wanted to try not to read it that way, even though it did seem to be coming out that way, but there is a lot of phallic energy going on here that could be absolutely, you know, um, affecting your ability to create that abundance, if you will, in your life. So you may have to be really careful and monitor, uh, again, that sexual aspect of your energy and make sure that you're not connecting with people who are going to potentially you know, cause you to have a block in your creative aspect of what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, with that King of Pentacles in reverse. So we got the Knight of Wands and the Wheel of Fortune with the Men energy coming out with the Page of Wands in reverse. So I really feel like that somebody wants you to take a chance and opportunity on them. But what I feel like is going to happen is it's going to distract you from this path that you're actually meant to go down. That's really going to bring you more happiness, stability, peace in your life. Um, it really is about, you've got to be so careful about who you choose as a partner. You know, once you get sex involved, that sexual energy is just so powerful. And it can cause us to, you know, forego our happiness, if you will, to not take advantage of those opportunities that we normally would have, you know, if we weren't confused, if we weren't caught up in a situation that has our 
is skewing our perception of things, if you will. Okay, so yeah, that definitely could be what's going on here today. You'll have to let me know. Hit the like button and, and also subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any readings. And guys, if you know a friend that could use this message, definitely pass it on to them, all right? This is a very, very powerful time. It's time for us to really make big strides and have great uh, abundance and opportunities for such in our lives, but it all depends on how we are holding our energy, how we're directing and guiding it, you know what I mean? The direction that we're allowing ourselves to go down, uh, energetically speaking. Uh, also, guys, if you need a personal reading, don't hesitate to reach out at the information in the description box. Guardian Angel message, we're going to get one and see what our advice is, and then I will pull some Lover's Oracle cards and get your question ready. We'll flip the divination coin. So here we are with that orange sacral chakra energy. Again, we've had a lot of creation energy, sexual energy coming out today. I could even see like someone potentially trying to get you pregnant to keep you somewhere. This would be like their wish fulfillment, you know, to be able to keep you with them because they see how beautiful and magnetic you are. But I don't feel like they're on the same level with you. They, I feel like they're more sexually uh, oriented as opposed to action oriented in the sense of really creating a lasting kind of environment, if you will. So drop all of the fear and just do it. Nike, just do it, right, with the action. You have the power to create and be whatever you truly want. Look inside your heart and take positive action in those things that bring you closer to achieving your desired goals, all right? What really makes you happy. Nothing can stop you except your own fears. Are you fearing you can't do it by yourself? something of that nature. This card is positive confirmation from God and the angels that the time is right for you to start a new and exciting adventure. Whoa. All right, guys, because it looks like there's a lot of good coming with this Wheel of Fortune card. It is in the upright. But it is, the power is all within you. You have to really have the ability to step back and take a look at your life and evaluate if it's truly going in the direction you want it to, or do you want to change course? All right, let's look at Lover's Oracle cards and see what's coming out today. Wow, definitely Venus retrograde, as, long as, as well as Mercury retrograde, I am going to say, has been taking its toll, has it not? And here we are with this twin flame energy. Whatever this is, has definitely been very strong. It definitely has that magnetic pull. It definitely lights your fire. Your, this card actually says your passion ignites. You know, this is definitely that someone that gets your motor running. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, this is absolutely a time though that you're being asked to instead pull back because you know, again, I feel like this is where this power struggle comes in, where this person is able to pull you back in because of perhaps the ability for you to have good sex, you know? So it is important right now to take a step back and spend some time alone. Instead of placing your focus on another, now is the time to give to yourself. How many of you can relate to that out there, that maybe it is time to step back from a relationship where somebody is really just too focused on you know, having that power over you, if you will. And this energy here of power says, you instinctively know what is right for you. And you have the power to say no or walk away at any time. So it is up to you to take the power into your own hands because it does feel like that this is in fact affecting your creative energy, your ability to create and build and grow the way you really you know, envision within yourself, but if you're being injected with this negative energy or this, you know, energy that is more focused on more earthly things, it's going to be hard to really tap into that blueprint that, of that Giza plateau, right? To really reach that energy of enlightenment 
from the ruta to the tuta, <laughs> as they say, you know, from the floor to the roof. It's time to really get all of our chakras back in line and make those connections within ourselves so that we can, you know, feel like we know what's going on and not be so scared and worried and putting our trust and energy into these temporal things. We need to be able to trust in ourselves, you know? All right, guys, let's get an answer to your question, shall we? In three, two, and one. Oh, I had a feeling that's what it would be. The answer today is a hard no, my dears. Well, you clearly see 2020, what is going on here. And again, you have the power in your hands. Use it wisely. Blessings to you, and I'll see you tomorrow for our animal totem spirit message. Bye for now.